Hello beautiful people, my name is Romance Freak and welcome back to Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Now for this week, uh, last time we went left off, Snape has been prowling around in the Forbidden Forest and dark and so now uh, Harry is going to try and figure out what's going on and in the meantime we have a dragon that's going to be uh, having to deal with. So. Um, chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Quirrell, however, must have been braver than they thought. In the weeks that followed, he did seem to get being paler and thinner, but it didn't look as though he'd crack yet. Every time they passed the third floor corridor, Harry, Ron, and Hermione would press their ears to the door to check that Fluffy was still growling inside. Snape was sweeping about in his usual bad temper, which surely meant that the stone was still safe. Whenever Harry passed Quirrell these days, he gave him an encouraging sort of smile and Ron had started telling people off or laughing at Quirrell's stutter. Hermione, however, had made, had more on her mind than the source of stone. She started drawing up study schedules and color-coding all her notes. Harry and Ron wouldn't have minded, but she kept nagging at them to do the same. Hermione, the exams are ages away. Ten weeks, Hermione snapped. That's not ages, that's like a second to Nicholas Flamel. But we're not six hundred years old, Ron reminded her. Anyway, what do you study for? You already know it all. What am I studying for? Are you crazy? You realize we need to pass these exams to get into second year? They're very important. I should have start, started studying a month ago. I don't know what's gotten into me. Unfortunately, the teacher seemed to be thinking along the same lines as Hermione. They piled so much homework on them that the Easter holidays weren't nearly as much fun as the Christmas ones. It was hard to relax with Hermione next to you, reciting the twelve uses of dragon's blood or practicing wand movements. Moaning and yawning, Harry and Ron spent most of their free time in the library with her trying to get through all their extra work. I'll never remember this, Ron burst out one afternoon, throwing down his quill and looking longingly out the library window. It was the first really fine day they'd had in months. The sky was a clear, forget-me-not blue, and there was a feeling of air that summer was coming. I hate it when that happens, when you are studying for something and you it's just a gorgeous day outside, you're like, let me out! <laughs> um. Harry, who was looking up Disney in 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi, didn't look up until he heard Ron say, Hagrid, what are you doing in the library? Hagrid shuffled into view, hiding something behind his back. He looked very out of place in his moleskin overcoat. Just looking, he said in a shifty voice that got their interest at once. And were you lot up to? He sounded like very suspicious. You're still not looking for Nicholas Smell, are you? Oh, we found out who he is ages ago, said Ron impressively. And we know what... That got dog's guarding. It's a sorceress. Shh! Hagrid looked around quickly to see if anyone was listening. Don't go shouting about it. What's the matter with you? There are a few things we want to ask you, as a matter of fact, said Harry. What's, what about, about what's guarding the stone apart from Fluffy? Shh! said Hagrid again. Listen, come and send me a later. I'm not promising I'll tell you anything, mine. But don't go rabbiting about it here. Students aren't supposed to know. I think I've told you. See you later then, said Harry. Hagrid shuffled off. What was he hiding behind his back? Hermione said thoughtfully. Do you think it had anything to do with the stone? I'm going to see what section he was in, said Ron, who had enough of working. He came back a minute later with a pile of books in his arms and slammed them down on the table. Dragons, he whispered. Hagrid's were looking at stuff about dragons. Look at these. Dragon spaces of Great Britain and Ireland. From Egg to Inferno, a dragon keeper's guide. Hagrid's always wanted a dragon. He told me so the first time I ever met him, said Harry. But it's against our laws, said Ron. Dragonbeer was outlawed by the Warlock's Convention of 1709. Everyone knows that. It's hard to stop us from noticing if we're keeping dragons in the back garden. Anyway, you can't tame dragons. It's dangerous. You should see the burns Charlie's got off wild ones in Romania. But there aren't wild ones in Britain, said Harry. Of course there are, said Ron. Common Welsh grain and her Bidian, her, uh, her Bridian blacks. The Ministry of Magic has a job hushing them up, I can tell you. I'll kind of been putting spells on muggles who spotted them to make them forget. So what on earth has Hagrid up to? said Hermione. When they knocked on the door of the gamekeeper's hut an hour later, they were surprised to see all the curtains were closed. Hagrid called, Who is it? before they let him in, then shut the door quickly behind them. It was stifling, hot inside. Even though it was such a warm day, there was a blazing fire in the grate. Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoked sandwiches, which they, re which they refused. So, you want to ask me something? Yes, said Harry. There is no point in being around the bush. 
We are wondering if you could tell us what's guarding the Sorcerer's Stone apart from Fluffy. Hagrid frowned. Of course I can't, he said. Number one, I didn't know myself. Number two, you, you know too much already, so I wouldn't tell you if I could. That stone's here for good reason. It was almost stolen out of Gringotts. I suppose you worked out that out and all? Beats me how you even knew about Fluffy. Oh, come on, Hagrid. You know, you might want not want to tell us, but you do know. You know everything that goes on around here, said Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. Hagrid's beard twitched, and they could tell he was smiling. We only wondered who had done the guarding, really, Hermione went on. We wondered who Dumbledore had trusted enough to help him, apart from you. Hagrid's chest swelled at these last words. Harry and Ron beamed at Hermione. Well, I don't suppose it could hurt to tell you that. Let's see. He borrowed Fluffy from me, then there's some of the teachers did the Chamans. Professor Sprout, Professor Flitwick, Professor McGonagall, he took off, off his fingers. Professor Quirrell, and Dumbledore himself did some of the course. Hang on, I forgot someone. Oh yeah, Professor Snape. Snape? Yeah. You're still not on about that, are you? Look, Snape helped protect the stone. He's not about to steal it. Harry knew Ron and Hermione were thinking the same as he was. If Snape had been on protecting the stone, it must have been easy to find out how the other teachers had guarded it. He probably knew everything, except, it seemed, Quirrell's spell and how to get past Fluffy. You're the only one who knows about how to get past Fluffy, aren't you, Hagrid? said Harry anxiously. And you wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Not even one of the teachers? Not a soul knows except me and Dumbledore, said Hagrid proudly. Well, that's something, Harry muttered to the others. Hagrid, can we have a window open? I'm boiling. Can't, Harry. Sorry. Hagrid said. Harry noticed at him glance at the fire. Harry looked at it too. Hagrid? What's that? But he already knew what it was. It was in the very heart of the fire, and underneath the kettle was a huge black egg. Ah, said Hagrid, feeling nervously with his beard. That's... Uh, uh. Where'd you get it, Hagrid? said Ron, crouching over the fire to get a closer look at the egg. Must have cost you a fortune. Want it, said Hagrid. Last night, uh, I was down in the village had a few drinks and gone to game of cards with a stranger. I think he was quite glad to get rid of it, to be honest. Well, what are you going to do with it when it's hatched? said Hermione. Well, I've been doing some writing, said Hagrid, pulling a large book from under his pillow. Got this out of the library. Dragon burning for pleasure and profit. It's a bit out of date, of course, but it's all in here. Keeps the egg in the fire, causes the mothers to breathe on sight, and when it hatches, feed on a bucket of brandy mixed with chicken blood every half hour. And see here how to recognize different eggs. What I got there is Norwegian Ridgeback. They're rare, then. He looked very pleased with himself, but Hermione didn't. Hagrid, you live in a wooden house, she said. But Hagrid wasn't listening. He was humming merrily as he stoked the fire. So now they had something else to worry about. What might happen to Hagrid if anyone found out he was hiding an illegal dragon in his hut? Wonder what it's like to have a peaceful life, Ron sighed, as evening after evening they struggled through all the extra homework they were getting. Hermione had now started making study schedules for Harry and Ron, too. It was driving them nuts. Then, one breakfast time, Hedwig brought Harry another note from Hagrid. He had written only two words. It's hatching. Ron wanted to skip herbology and go straight down to the hut. Hermione wouldn't hear of it. Hermione, how many times in our lives we're going to see a dragon hatching? We've got lessons. We'll get into trouble, and that's nothing to what Hagrid's going to be. And that's nothing to what Hagrid's going to be in when someone finds out what he's doing. Shut up! Harry whispered. Malfoy was only a few feet away and stopped dead to listen. How much had he heard? Harry did not like the look on Malfoy's face at all. Ron and Hermione argued all the way to the herbology, and in the end, Hermione agreed to run down to Hagrid's with the other two during morning break. When the bell sounded from the castle at the end of the lesson, the three of them dropped their trowels at once and hurried through the ground to the edge of the forest. Hagrid greeted them, looking flushed and excited. It's nearly out! He ushered them inside. The egg was lying on the table. There were deep cracks in it. Something was moving inside. A funny clicking noise was coming from it. They all drew their chairs up to the table and watched with bated breath. All at once, there was a scraping noise and the egg split open. The baby dragon flopped onto the table. It wasn't exactly pretty. Harry thought it looked like a crumpled black umbrella. Its spiny wings were huge and compared to its skinny jet body. It had a long snout with wide nostrils, the stubs of horns, and bulging orange eyes. It sneezed. A couple sparks blew, flew out of its snout. Isn't he beautiful? 
Haggard murmured. He reached out a hand to stroke the dragon's head. It snapped at his fingers, showing pointed fangs. Bless him, look, he knows his mommy, he said. Hagrid, said Hermione, how fast do Norwegian Ridgebacks grow exactly? Hagrid was about to answer when the color suddenly drained from his face. He leapt to his feet and ran to the window. What's the matter? Someone was looking in through the gap in the curtains. It's a kid. He's run back up to the school. Harry bolted the door and looked out. Even at a distance, there was no mistaking him. Malfoy had seen the dragon. Something about the smile lurking on Malfoy's face during the next week made Harry run Hermione very nervous. They spent most of their free time in Hagrid's darkened hut, trying to reason with him. Just let him go, Harry urged. Set him free. I can't, said Hagrid. He's too little. He'd die. They look at the dragon. It had grown three times its length in just a week. Smoke kept furling out of its nostrils. Hagrid had been doing his gamekeeping duties because the dragon was keeping him so busy. There were empty brandy bottles and chicken feathers all over the floor. I decided to call him Norbert, said Hagrid, looking at the dragon with misty eyes. He really knows me. Now watch. Norbert! Norbert! Where's Mummy? He's lost his marbles, Ron muttered in Harry's ear. Hagrid, said Harry loudly, give it two weeks and Norbert's going to be as long as your house. And Malfoy we could go to Dumbledore at any moment. Hagrid bit his lip. I, uh, I know I can't keep up forever, but I just can't dump him. I can't. Harry suddenly turned to Ron. Charlie, he said. You're losing a toe, said Ron. I'm Ron, remember? No, no, no. Charlie, your brother. Charlie. You know, Mania, studying dragons. We could send Norbo to him. Charlie can take care of him and put him back in the wild. Brilliant, said Ron. How about it, Hagrid? And in the end, Hagrid agreed they could send an owl to Charlie to ask him. The following week dragged by. Wednesday night found Hermione and Harry sitting alone in the common room long after everyone else had gone to bed. The clock on the wall had just chimed midnight when the portrait hole burst open. Ron appeared out of nowhere as he pulled off Harry's invisibility cloak. He had been down at Hagrid's hut, helping him feed Norbert, who was now eating dead rats by the crate. It bit me, he said, showing his hand, which wrapped in a bloody handkerchief. I'm not going to be able to hold a quilt for a week. I tell you, that dragon is the most horrible animal I've ever met. By the way Hagrid goes on about it, you think it was a fluffy little bunny rabbit. When it bit me, he told me off of finding it. And when I left, he was singing it a lullaby. And there was a tap on the dark window. It's Hedwig, said Har Harry, trying to let her, let her in. She'll have Charlie's letter. The three of them put their heads together to read the note. Dear Ron, how are you? Thanks for the letter. I'll be glad to take the Norwegian rich back, but it won't be easy getting him here. I think the best thing will be to send him over with some friends of mine who are coming to visit me next week. Trouble is, they can't, mustn't be seen carrying an illegal dragon. Could you give me the rich back of the tallest tower at midnight on Saturday? They can meet you then and take you, him away while it's still dark. Send me an answer as soon as possible. Love, Charlie. They looked at one another. We've got the visibility cloak, said Harry. It shouldn't be too difficult. I think the cloak's big enough to cover two of us and Norbert. It was a mark of how bad the last week had been that the other two agreed with him. Anything to get rid of Norbert and Malfoy. There was a hitch. By the next morning, Ron's bin hand had swollen to twice its usual size. He didn't know whether it was safe to go to Madame Pomfrey. Would she recognize the dragon bite? By the afternoon, though, he had no choice. The cut had turned a nasty shade of green. It looked as if Norbert's fangs were poisonous. Harry and Hermione rushed out to the hospital wing at the end of the day to find Ron in a terrible state in bed. It's not just my hand, he whispered, although that feels like it's about to fall off. Malfoy told Madame Pomfrey he was about to borrow one of my books so he could come and have a good laugh at me. He kept threatening to tell her what really bit me. I've told her it was a dog, but I don't think she believes me. I shouldn't have hit him at the Quidditch match. That's why he's doing this. Harry and Ron tried to calm Ron down. It would be all over by midnight on Saturday, said Hermione, but this didn't soothe Ron at all. On the contrary, he sat bolt upright and broke into a sweat. Midnight on Saturday, he said in a hoarse voice. Oh no, oh no, I just remembered. Charlie's letter it was in that book Malfoy took. And he's going to know we're getting rid of Norbert. Harry and Hermione didn't get a chance to answer. Madame Pomfrey came over at the moment and made them leave, saying Ron needed sleep. It's too late to change the plan now, Harry told Hermione. We haven't got time to send Charlie another owl. This could be our only chance to get rid of Norbert. We'll have to risk it. And it, we have got the visibility cloak. Malfoy doesn't know about that. And they found Fang the Boarhound sitting outside with a bandaged tail when they went to tell Hagrid, who opened a window to talk to them. I won't let you in. He puffed Norbert's at a tricky stage. Nothing I can't handle. 
About When they told him about Charlie's letter, his eyes filled with tears, although that might have been because Norbert had just bitten him on the leg. Arr! It's all right. He only got my boot. Just playing. He's only a baby, after all. The baby banged his head, his tail on the wall, making the windows rattle. Harry and Hermione walked back to the castle, feeling Saturday couldn't come quickly enough. They would have felt sorry for Hagrid when the time came for him to say goodbye to Norbert if they hadn't been so worried about what they had to do. It was a very dark, cloudy night, and they were a bit late arriving at Hagrid's hut because they had to wait for Peeves to get out of their way at the entrance hall where he had been playing tennis against the wall. Hagrid had Norbert packed and ready in a large crate. He's got lots of rats and some brandy for the journey, he said Hagrid in a muffled voice, and I packed his teddy bear just in case he gets lonely. From inside the crate came a ripping noise that sounded to Harry as though the teddy was having his head torn off. Bye bye, Norbert! Hagrid sobbed as Harry and Hermione covered the crate with the invisibility cloak and stepped underneath it themselves. Mommy will never forget you! How they managed to get the crate back up to the castle, they never knew. Midnight ticked near as they heaved Norbert up this marble staircase in the entrance hall along the court dark corridors. Up another staircase, then another. Even one of Harry's shortcuts didn't make the work much easier. <sighs> Nearly there, Harry panted as they reached the corridor beneath the tallest tower. And then a sudden movement ahead of them made them almost drop the crate. Forgetting they were already invisible, they shrank into the shadows, staring at the dark outlines of two people grappling with each other ten feet away. A lamp flared. Professor McGonagall, in a tartan bathrobe and a hairnet, had Malfoy by the ear. Detention! she shouted, and twenty points from Slytherin! Wandering around the middle of the night, how dare you! You don't understand, Professor! Harry Potter's so coming! He's got a dragon! What other rubbish! How dare you tell such lies! Come on, I shall see Professor Snape about you, Malfoy! The steep spiral staircase up to the top of the tower seemed the easiest thing in the world after that. Not until they stepped out of the cold night air did they throw off the cloak, glad to be able to breathe properly again. Hermione did a sort of jig. Malfoy's got detention! I could sing! Don't, Harry advised her. Chuckling about Malfoy, they waited, Norbert thrashing about in his crate. About ten minutes later, four broomsticks came swooping down from the darkness. Charlie's friends were a cheery lot. They showed Harry and Hermione the harnesses they rigged up so they could suspend Norbert between them. They all helped buckle Norbert safely into it, and then Harry and Hermione shook hands with the others and thanked them very much. At last, Norbert was going, going, gone. They slipped back down the spiral staircase, their hearts light as their hands, now that Norbert was off them. No more dragon, Malfoy detention, what could spoil their happiness? The answer to that was waiting at the foot of the stairs. And as they stepped into the corridor, Filch's face loomed suddenly out of the darkness. Well, 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 he whispered, we are in trouble. They left the invisibility cloak on top of the tower. Dun, dun, dun. And with that, we'll leave chapter 14, and soon we'll get into chapter 15, The Forbidden Forest. For the question for this chapter for this week is, what would you name your dragon if you had one, and if you could tame it, anyway? Like, how to train your dragon type of dragons, or would it not matter to you? And you would just name it anyway, and have fun with it. So, um, yeah, just leave your comments down in the comment section below, and I would love to read it. So, peace out. I love y'all. I'll see you next time my den.